The word chakra has entered the Western lexicon. Actually, Carl Jung studied theoretically. He didn't have a teacher, didn't get initiated, but just read books. And uh, as a psychologist, tried to uh, learn some of these things on his own. And so he popularized these terms, but it's unclear to what, which ones he got right, which ones he got wrong. In the end, he made a U-turn away from the tradition, but he left a lexicon of terms like, uh, uh, you know, kundalini, like, like chakras and so on. So the term is not very well understood in the, in the English-speaking world, the Western world and anglicized in Westernized Indians. Uh, and it's considered sort of disconnected, even those who sort of practice it as a technique, they do some chakra meditation, uh, do not understand that it, you cannot just separate it from the rest of the dharmic framework mm -hmm. and just practice this separately. And some even try to connect it into Christianity. So can you tell us what chakras are and uh, so we understand them correctly? Yeah, this is also a very interesting question you have raised. See, our whole Vedic culture and Vedic philosophy is based to understand the source of consciousness. And the whole study of the Vedas and the you know, Upanishads and the Agamas and all literature is actually to investigate what is this consciousness. Mm. Because we all know that body does not have inherent consciousness in it. Mm. That is understood because if I cut my finger from here, there is no consciousness in it. You give me an injection of anesthesia, my whole hand will become numb, I don't feel anything. If it, if it was, the consciousness was really within my hand or within this body, there was no possibility of giving me anesthesia and making me unconscious. So that means consciousness is not within the body inherently, it is coming from some other source. So. We understand from our Vedic literature and our Rishis have actually seen it that consciousness flows from Atma, mm. which is part of Paramatma. Mm. So Atma is the source of consciousness. But now when you study Atma and when you study the Prakriti, Prakriti and Purusha, the Sankhya philosophy again, which is very important part of our knowledge systems. So these are two opposite things because Prakriti undergoes modifications, it changes. And Atma is immutable. Hmm. It has no beginning, no end, no birth, no death, none of these things. So how does these two things interact with each other? Because we know that this human being is a combination of Prakriti and Purusha. So how does this Purusha, which actually does not come in contact physically with Prakriti at all, right? Asangohi ayam Purusha is the statement of the Upanishads. That Purusha is Asanga, it is non-touched. So if it is not coming in contact, how does the consciousness of the Purusha, of Atma, of the living being enter into the physical body and then we function? Hmm. So like I always give the example of car, we have a car, so you have engine, you have fuel injection system, you have brakes, accelerator, tires and everything, right? But it does not work if there is no battery. So battery is connected to that and then electricity comes and then everything works. If you remove the battery, nothing will work. Mm. But there we know that it is physical, there is a physical contact. Mm. But here there is actually no physical contact. Mm. And yet the consciousness manifests. Something like if you have a magnet and you put under this table and on top if there are some iron fillings, you move the magnet, the iron fillings will move. Mm. So because magnet has a field mm. and that field influences. Mm the iron around it. So similarly, you can say that Atma has a field of consciousness mm. and that consciousness then influences the matter. Mm. So our body is made of 24 tattvas mm. according to Sankhya, right? So 24, if you say 2 plus 4 is 6. Mm. So there are 6 chakras mm. in the body mm. and the chakras signify the points through which the consciousness manifests. Mm. Or you can say that the Atma itself has its own eye consciousness mm. because Atma is a living being. Right. So, so it has its own sense of eye, which is pure sense of eye. And that eye has to identify with the physical body. Eye as in capital I letter self. Right. Okay. Yeah. 
so that that I is without any content. Right. It's like you say I am what I am. Right. So there is no predicate for it. Right. So that I manifest into the body, then you say I am so and so. Right. So that predicate is supplied by the prakriti part. Right. And now that I is actually reflecting into this body, right. but that consciousness manifests at different levels. So those six are the levels. Mm. Actually, total levels are 14, mm. but in our human body, there are six prime levels mm. beginning from the Muladhar chakra. Mm. Then there are below seven chakras below and then seven above. Seventh is the Sahasrara chakra. Mm. So, this consciousness actually these are like the centers through which the consciousness is plugged into. Mm. So, when it is plugged into the Muladhar chakra, then consciousness manifests in one way. Mm. Then you are very interested in food. Mm. When it is plugged into the Swadhisthana chakra, then you are very much interested into sex. Mm. When you come above, then some transformation happens. So, depending on where your consciousness is plugged into, mm. then that is how your consciousness manifests in your actions in the material mm. world. Mm. So, the whole idea of saying that you have to raise your Kundalini, which is a representation of Ahankara means you have to take your eye consciousness from Muladhar up to the Sahasrar. Mm. So, which means that you are elevating yourself in consciousness. That is the evolution, mm. our, in our terminology, the evolution of awareness or consciousness. So, since the different levels are chakras, right. represent different states or different kinds of consciousness, right. uh, we can evolve from one to the next. Right. So, is a person going to be permanently evolved or is it that he could go to level this, then level that, then level this throughout a day, move back and forth? Primarily, you are at, you know, this consciousness is actually plugged into all of them. Okay. In a human body. But maybe not the same level, same but amount. Same. Yeah, but not same. So, some are, like some are poetic people, you know, naturally they are born poets, they can, they are interested in fine art. So, they are already into their anahat chakra. Right. So, right. into their heart chakra. So, we can say, so these, these particular physical locations, uh, they don't, do they correspond with biological glands or do, are they just locations and you can't just sort of make a physical thing out of well, it? Well, like originally they are not in the physical body. Okay, they so you in, cannot, uh, in the sukshma sarira. so I can't transplant a no. chakra. No, no, I can't do chakra transplant. No, no, there is no? no such thing. Okay. So, they are actually. That's, it, that's good to remember. Yeah. So Otherwise, somebody could start some chakra farm yeah. and create, sell you a chakra or something. <laughs> like they're selling some organs, you know. Yeah, they can do that, but that's not possible. <laughs> so the whole idea is that uh, our prakriti manifests from subtle to gross. So we have the sukshma sarira. So these are points in the sukshma sarira, in the subtle body, and then then the corresponding things have to be in the gross body also. Because this gross body is a manifestation from subtle to the gross. So, like ultimately this gross body is a solidification of my past karma. Mm, yes. Right? It, they are all interlinked. And what is a karma? Karma is an action which I have performed because of my will. Right. And then will is because of my awareness or my consciousness. Yes. So, then it becomes manifest like that. Yes. So, similarly, there is, there is the subtle sukshma sarira. And then correspondingly, because sukshma cannot do act in the gross world, right. so then you need a gross physical body. Right. So there is a correspondence, but you cannot just like brain is not the manas, although right. we try, we right. call it as a mind, but it is an organ for that, right. because manas is very subtle. It is part of the subtle body or sukshma sarira. Right. But for it to act in the gross material world, it needs an organ. So brain is an organ for that. Right. Because whenever you have to deal with material world which is made of this Pancha Mahabhutas, then you all need instruments to deal with those Pancha Mahabhutas which have to be at that level. So, can we say chakra is not a physical body thing, but it, it is located in order to use some instrument, right. the body as an instrument. So, originally chakras are in the sukshma sarira, right. and then they have corresponding points in the gross physical body. Similarly, like you have your sense of seeing and then you have your eyes which are the organ of seeing. Right. right. So, our sense of seeing is only one. Right. But we have two eyes. Right. 
right? Right. So that sense of seeing is working through these eyes. Right. But if I block my eyes, I cannot remove the sense of seeing. Correct. Sense of see sense of seeing is beyond that. Yeah. That is why people who are biologically blind right. can dream, can have yeah, ideas, they, can yeah, we think. We also can dream at night with closed eyes. Yeah, 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 yeah. They, they, and they can visualize right. quite well, actually, some yes. of them. So, so the common uh, uh, translation, whether it's a Deepak Chopra or a Wikipedia or any of those, it seems to talk about energy centers. Yeah. So, what do you think of that? Well, it's not a real. I mean, it's not a proper translation, obviously, because these are not just energy centers. As I said, that ultimately they're related with consciousness, and energy is something which you call like you know some ability to work. And very it's material and physical. Yeah, but these chakras are something beyond that. There, there are a lot of things which are related with our whole Sanskrit word mala is related with the chakras. In what way? In what way? Because these chakras have petals. Right. Okay, and the, uh, every petal represents one letter. Also. Okay. And every letter has got certain potency in it. Right. So then there are mantras related with that, and then mantras are related with uplifting your consciousness. So the mantra, uh, you can have a mantra for a particular chakra right. because those lotuses represent uh, symbols, so right. they represent uh, alphabets or represent parts of the Sanskrit sound system. And then there is a divinity related with that. Right. Like Muladhar chakra is there, so there is a divinity of Ganesha related with that. Right. So then every chakra has got divinity, divine person related so with that. So to Meditate on a chakra involves the mantra, involves the deity. Right. And the mantra and the form and visualization of that. Yes. So this is this is how your awareness gets lifted up. So the ch the chakra is a consciousness center rather consciousness than center. rather than energy center. Right. That will be more appropriate. A little to bit say more, that. little bit closer. Right. Ultimately you can relate the whole philosophy with it, your language, our you know, consciousness, our bodies, our actions, our the desires, they are related with this. Like when you see the planetary system, as I said, that one of the very basic principle of Tantra is that whatever is in physical body is also outside. So you always hear of the 14 Lokas, mm. right? So these 14 Lokas are also related with 14 levels of consciousness. Mm. So we have actually 14 chakras mm. in the body, seven lower and seven above. Mm. So Muladhar is the central one. Hmm. Below that is all animalistic and plant life. Right. So similarly, we have the planetary system like that, you know, I mean the loka system. Hmm. So by realizing those chakras, you also get understanding of the universe. Hmm. So the, when you see the Puranic, you know, uh, description of the universe, and there's a lot of talk about that these days, like if you read Bhagavatam 5th canto, Pancham Skandha, there is a big description of the various lokas there. And then they say, well, it does not match what we see outside. Because what outside what you are seeing is only the Adibhuta, the gross physical thing. Right. But the Purana is talking about that vision which you will get when you have this understanding mm. of these chakras. Mm. So then this will be revealed to you. So that's why the sage is called Rishi, mm. because he is a drashta. Mm. He is seeing the mantra and mantra is revealing everything else related to that. So can we say that uh, the chakra is to the body what the lokas are in the macrocosm? Right. right. So chakras right. are the body's representation or mirroring of the lokas. Right. The lokas are in the cosmos and the chakras are inside. So uh, one of the very interesting point of our Vedic system is that everything has personality behind it. Yeah, this is this, very this interesting. Is we have to understand and this is very much misunderstood by the Western Indologists and you know scholars and Indians also now. That here why is that we worship the rivers and mountains and you know trees and plants and everything because they have a personality behind them. So this universe is also a person that is called Virat Purusha. Mm. So there is actually it is this universe is a person. Mm. So as we have our physical body, this is his body. Mm. And as you said, 
rightly that the chakra have a corresponding loka there. Mm. They are they are his chakras. Mm. So he has his awareness, his consciousness. So by approaching this and by purifying this and visualizing this, we will understand that. And then we go beyond that and we come to the Mahapurusha, the Supreme Person. Mm. So it Excellent. Is, it is very, very well knit philosophy. Yes. Lot of internal consistency. Right. And the problem comes when a person rather than understanding this in system in its own terms, takes isolated parts and maps it onto a different system. And that's kind that's, of that's a big distortion. That you cannot do that. Then then once you mapped it, which is which is what we are avoiding in this whole non translatable series, uh, once you've mapped some part of it and then you map something else to another part of another system. You know, it all looks hodgepodge, it all looks confusing, it looks contradictory because what you mapped it, by mapped it on to is not a sophisticated enough host to host this knowledge. Yeah. The other system that you're mapping it on to, like calling it energy center and all that, are not rich enough, profound enough to uh, contain the whole meaning and therefore it's a distortion. Yeah, because everything is interconnected and everything is very consistent. I mean, it may be a little digression, but I give you an example. When I was young as a child, I had some problem with my left thigh. There was some kind of swelling and pain. So there was a lady in the village, she knew that to treat that. But the treatment was that she didn't treat my left leg at all. She was massaging my right leg, mm. which was good for me because massaging left would be very painful. And by doing that, she cured this. So that means actually treating your right leg can have an influence on your left leg. Because of the interconnectedness. Because of interconnectedness. Wonderful. And it is amazing that people in village, they knew this. So how something is connected with something else that at first sight looks unrelated. Right. I mean, that's the profoundness of our system. So these chakras are also profoundly interrelated. Yeah, they're all, they're all interrelated. Good. So therefore, when we have a system like even this Ashtanga Yoga, it's not that you can just, just do asanas and pranayama and that's all. You have to have the yama and niyama. Right. Because it's all interrelated. Right. They are very well designed that if you do this, then you will have the influence and then it, you will take you to the samadhi level. Right. But if you take out only these asanas and now they are doing what we call beer yoga and right. nude yoga. Right. And cat yoga is coming now. Right. And there is also doga. You are doing yoga with dog. So this is all distortion. So these are experiments being tried where there is not enough experience to tell what it leads to. Uh, so misrepresenting that do this, it will produce that result, it has never been tested. So it is kind of irresponsible also right. to, to make these distortions in the name of offering a genuine product is a distortion because you really have not been able to establish that. Yeah, and also you know their aim is actually to make money as you said consumerism. You know. So this is all consumerism. Yeah. Right. Good.